Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to episode 11 of Kipper the Dog Home Media Reviews. Th this episode has some perfect timing to it as it is now June, which means it's summer over here in the United States of America. And what better release to talk about than fun in the sun? Let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into the history section of fun in the sun. So fun in the sun hit VHS and DVD on June 3rd, 2003. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is the first time a Kipper release has hit both formats on the same day. So I think last week with Playtime, the VHS hit and then a few weeks later, the DVD hit. So that's a pretty cool leap forward in terms of home video releases. There was not a white variant of the VHS tape, at least not one that I can see on the wiki. However, there were two variants of the DVD disc. You can see on your screen right now, the only change is the font of the fun in the sun title there. I don't know which one came first or which one came second. I don't know if they just had two versions out there at the same time. I'm not too sure. The wiki, it doesn't specify. It just says that there are two versions of this disc. And as far as physical copies go, that is pretty much it. Let's go ahead and move right along to the close-up. Alrighty, everyone, here's your close-up look at Fun in the Sun. If we look up here, we got the DVD logo in white, Kipper logo in white, Fun in the Sun with a rainbow in the background there, and Kipper building a sandcastle. 60 m m minutes of fun down there at the bottom. This might be my favorite poster out of the entire Kipper franchise. It's just so wholesome. And no, I'm not just saying that because, oh, I own this one as a kid and it is nostalgic and whatever. No, this poster is really, really good. You may notice, of course, there are some uh, some, some holes in the plastic there. Um, when my dog, Steeler, was really young, he used to love to chew on things, and he unfortunately chewed on this case. Surprising that there isn't any damage to the artwork, just the case on the outside. Maybe I swapped this case at some point in time, but there isn't any damage on the artwork itself, just on the case. The spine features new clip art of Kipper. Again, him, I guess, starting to construct the sandcastle. Kipper logo again, Fun in the Sun, Hit logo, DVD logo, and a product number down there at the bottom. The back features Kipper just chilling out, having some fun in the sun. <laughs> I'm hilarious. Uh, you've got your blurb about the release. There's Tiger Arnold, and I think some chicks, because this... Uh, because this release features the farm down at the bottom, so I think these are chicks, probably. They kind of remind me of ducklings, though. You have your seven stories over here. This is off to the side. And then, down here at the bottom, a link to the Kipper website, along with copyright information. Your disc is reflective gray. Not anything too special there. So that wraps up your close-up. Let's move right along to the menu tour. Alrighty, everyone. Here's your menu tour for Fun in the Sun. So I'm currently shooting this. It is snowing outside, and I wish I was having fun in the sun right now. But I'm not. I'm freezing my baguettes off. I kind of figured this would happen. Um, so like with Pools, Parks, and Picnics, and Tiger Tales, and some of those earlier Kipper releases, um, Fun in the Sun doesn't have a menu. Because I believe this is one of the first DVD releases... Uh, for the Kipper the Dog franchise, um, except though it's coming out a few years after. So, for the record, though, this does start off with a couple trailers. We have a trailer uh, for Barney, uh, for Bob the Builder, the Knights of Fix a Lot, a trailer for Kipper, uh, Playtime, actually, a trailer for the Wiggles, some kind of Pirate Bay thing. I don't really know what it is, um, and a trailer for Angelina Ballerina. She's a ballerina, and she's her name's Angelina. You know that kind of thing. 
Other than that, though, there is no bonus content or anything here for us to look at, so just like those earlier releases, that's the end of the menu tour. <laughs> uh, there isn't one. For what it's worth, though, I can show you. Uh, the release runs an hour, um, and we're about seven minutes in when the trailers are over. So the actual Kipper content on this lasts for probably about 50 minutes, 55 minutes. I don't know, I just thought you guys would want to know that. That wraps up your non-menu tour. Let's go ahead and head on back and answer the five main questions as always. All right, so we're back from the close-up. Now it's time to answer the five main questions as always. Number one, where can you pick this product up? eBay. <laughs> I get real tired of saying this every week, but online retailers primarily. Number two, is this product still being printed nowadays? Unfortunately, it is not. Number three, should you pick this product up? I don't know if I've mentioned th this yet or not, but I have a lot of fond memories of fun in th th the sun. Primarily because it was the only Kipper release that I owned on DVD as a kid. So this one went with me and my brother on a lot of car trips. We had a portable DVD player, a binder that was full of discs, and this was always one of them. So a lot of these episodes are very nostalgic for me. We start off with The Rescue. And we start off with the best backgrounds I've seen in this show. That beach looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like a real beach instead of a huge white void that implies that there's a beach there. I'm half convinced that my uncle saw this episode and devoted his life to sand sculptures after seeing that boat that everyone builds. My uncle is a genius when it comes to sand sculptures. Every year on a family vacation, we had to build an amazing sand sculpture. We've done a shark, SpongeBob SquarePants, the McDonald's logo, you name it, my uncle has sculpted it. It's really sweet, though, how everyone pitches in to help and build that boat for Arnold. Too bad he's an ungrateful butthole and leaves in the middle of the demonstration to look at the real one. I love looking for creatures in tide pools. I've had that experience many times, and I probably found a lot of starfish. Never found a prawn before, but apparently they like seaweed. Kipper and Tiger then get stranded on this giant rock because the tide is coming in and Arnold sees them and like the good CIA operative that he is, he walks away to go and tell his superiors to take them out because they know too much. Uh, I mean, he tells Pig to pilot the boat to go and save them that they found earlier in the episode. Yeah, that's what I meant. Tiger's monologue is absolutely hilarious, though. He goes on and on about how they won't have any food, no water... And at the end of it, he just goes with, It's going to be really, really boring! I think that's the least of your concerns, Tiger. This episode is great. I love it. Clouds. Man, Big Hill is looking fantastic with that new color scheme and backgrounds. Those clouds look great, too. The backgrounds so far are just amazing here. What about that one? Uh, another pillow? Typical pig always thinking with his bed. And of course he falls asleep here in the middle of the day. A rainbow then falls out of the sky. And Arnold, because the show has no limits on what it will do, starts walking on it and vanishes into the clouds. We don't even wait till the fourth or fifth episode to get crazy. We're just jumping right into it. And I kind of love it. Also, Kipper follows him. Forgot to mention that. Cloud rabbits live in the clouds. <laughs> like rabbits made out of clouds. Just roll with it. <laughs> the rabbit uses his cloud bending ability to reveal the horizon, and it's pretty cool to see. But why does the cloud? But why does the rabbit have the ability to bend clouds? Are we in Avatar: The Last Airbender all of a sudden? Arnold then rides a cloud scooter around to Kipper's location because Kipper's been following him throughout this episode. Kipper also rides a cloud train, and then when a storm rolls in, they both fall to the ground and don't die for some odd reason. But they almost kill Pig again. Pig literally has almost died twice in this show. <laughs> this episode reminds me a lot of Arnold's balloon trip, but without the comedy. It's more whimsical, which isn't bad. It just didn't appeal much to me. I'm more of a comedic Kipper fan rather than the whimsical side of the show. It's a good episode. It just wasn't my favorite. Crazy Golf. Tiger, man, why didn't you yell four? Kipper's right there, and you just drilled him in the head. You almost killed Kipper. Why is there so much almost death in this show? <laughs> Crazy Golf is basically just 
mini golf, which is way more fun than regular golf, mostly because I'm crap at real golf and I'm pretty good at mini golf. Tiger's so petty though that it's hilarious. <laughs> Kipper hits a hole, a hole in one on his first shot, and poor Tiger can only tell him, yes, well done, in the most petty way possible. Kipper hits his ball like he's at the driving range, man. You don't need to hit a ball that hard when you're playing mini golf. Tiger is stuck at that windmill throughout the entire episode, and it's hilarious. I love that joke when he actually hits his ball into the windmill. He goes, hey And then he waits for the ball to come out, and he's like, hmm, it must be stuck. <laughs> he looks through the hole on the other side. The ball just rolls out and taps him on the nose. Oh, no. It's landed in the pond. Tiger's dedicated, though. He actually gets in that pond and tries to find his ball. At that point, Tiger, it's just time to give up, though. Great episode. Love it. Water, water everywhere. Doesn't having a dirt bath make you dirty? My question exactly, Kipper. Why do animals take dirt baths? I'm sure there's a scientific explanation behind it. I've just never heard one. Like, chickens take those kinds of baths. Chinchillas take dust baths. Why do they do that? Did Kipper get a smaller paddling pool? Or does this episode take place prior to all the other episodes in the show where we've seen his paddling pool? Because that thing was definitely not that small the last time that we saw it. He's been lounging around in th that thing and there's plenty of space for somebody else to get in there. It smells like a continuity error. <laughs> when Kipper and Tiger fall asleep though, on that wet ground. Can you imagine how much grass was stuck on their backs just all around them? Just, ugh. Makes me cringe just thinking about it. I used to hate that part when I was a kid. I loved my inflatable pool, but I hated the fact that grass always got in it because my parents, would they, they would never set it up on our patio. They would set it up in the grass and I'd have to walk out there, get my feet all muddy and everything. I just, I hated that part of it. Ugh. I'm all covered in mud. Kipper, we're all covered in mud. I don't know, Tiger. Your character model looks pretty clean to me. I strive to be as chill as Kipper when he sees his house is flooded. I mean, he just looks in and is like, Wow, look at that. I mean, I'd be screaming obscenities like nobody's business. I would be so upset because all of my stuff was just ruined. Very simplistic episode, but a fun one. The Big Race. The next one to say anything is a banana. <laughs> Dog is a banana. That is true boredom. <laughs> they all laugh so hard at that joke when when they make Tiger be the quote banana. I mean, that just, you can tell they're all super bored. There's not much to do here, apparently. So they decide to have a big race. And because Pig doesn't want to race, he's the officiant, I guess. The referee, the guy who starts the race, who should have a gun, but he doesn't because there are no guns in this universe, so he just blows his whistle. Tiger's decked out in his racing attire, though, complete with a helmet for some reason. With as accident-prone as Tiger is, I'm actually surprised he's taking that much precaution, but I'm happy for him. I am conflicted about his choice to hide his tricycle, though, because on the one hand, that's an incredibly smart move. On the other hand, it's kind of cheating. But Tiger's right, because, well, well, nobody said what kind of race it was. Legal loophole, I guess? Arnold's just chilling over at the duck pond, probably thinking about Jake coming to pick him up, because he obviously paid Jake to help him win, because Arnold is way smarter than we as an audience give him credit for. Of course, I'm sure he laid out some spare claymores on the course in case his plan failed. Luckily, he didn't need to kill off his enemies, I mean his friends, and it is pretty nice that he left some cake there for everyone, because the prize was one of Pig's cakes. Sure, after you just run a whole hell of a lot of miles, then replenish those calories, and then some, with a giant cake. Honestly, I would do the same thing. <laughs> Arnold on wheels. I haven't talked about this a lot in this release until I got to this episode, because... This whole thing is just Pig telling Arnold he can't do things because he's too young. He can't ride in that boat. He can't play crazy golf. And now he can't ride a bike? Pig, let the kid live a little bit. That'll need some oil then. Uh, Kipper, I wouldn't put oil on that. I would put some 
WD-40 on there, it should fix those squeaks lackety split. It's a hell of a lot cheaper than oil, too. Arnold's a natural on that bike, though. The kid drifts without ever having been on a bike before, though. Love that Tiger subtly tells Kipper, Hey, you idiot. You drenched this thing in oil. What were you thinking? Neither of the adults can keep pace with Arnold, which is 100% accurate. Whenever I'm out with Hope and her younger cousins, they always wear me out. I remember having that much energy. I miss it. Now all I have is taxes and back pain. The animation and cinematography during the race was really good, actually. It felt kind of intense for this show. Arnold gets his revenge on Pig by running him off the road. Absolute legend. <laughs> and I'm sure... I don't know if Pig almost died there, but he almost got seriously injured. We end things off with The Farm. cock a doodle do cock a doodly do cock a doodly do Kippa! Tucker, what are you doing? I'm being a cockerel to wake y you up, Kippa. Tiger, I'm going to be honest. Don't talk to me before like 10 or 11 a.m. on a weekend because I will punch you in the face. I assume this is taking place on a weekend. I don't know why a farm like that would be open during the week. I've never heard of farms being constantly muddy, though. All the farms I've been to, they've had a lot of grass and hay everywhere, but not really a lot of mud. Especially not muddy enough to stop Arnold's sh stroller or to need boots to walk in, and to be so sticky that Tiger's foot literally slides out of his boot. I think maybe Tiger's boot is just too big for his foot. And is this farm like a public farm? Like, can anyone go to it? Or is this private property and all the characters are trespassing? I need answers to these questions, people. If we're really quiet and don't move too quickly, they might come and eat this grass. Really? Pig, the freaking comedian over here. <laughs> the duck hatching is the best part of this episode. Because not only is it just kind of cool to watch a duck hatch, the duck is adorable. And then Arnold saying, Duck! Just made me happy. And he goes off and joins his little family, and then everyone's like, Quack, 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 quack. Great way to end off this release. Fun in th th the sun is all around great fun. Pun absolutely intended there, and a perfect start to the summer season. You'll have a great time with any of these episodes. Even clouds, as much as I... I wouldn't say I didn't like it, because I've said this earlier, there is no bad episode of Kipper. All of, all of these episodes are bangers. Clouds just didn't really appeal to me. But any of these episodes, I'm sure, will appeal to anyone out there. That's why I highly, highly recommend Fun in the Sun. Number four, where should you pick this product up? Same answers as number one. And number five, what price should you pay? Well, both of the VHS and the... DVD variants of this are not worth that much. It's funny because I only ever owned the DVD as a kid. I never saw the VHS as a kid. But now, primarily, what I'm seeing on eBay is the VHS tape. I would say probably around 5 to 10 for either of them would probably be a good deal. Well, folks, that wraps up your home media review for Fun in the Sun. I hope you guys had a lot of... <laughs> fun while you were watching this pun absolutely intended again i certainly did this release was awesome it's one of my favorites definitely goes in the higher tier of stuff that i watched when i w was younger because as i said i watched this one a lot on car trips so what are we covering next week folks well in order to tell you we have got to go down a certain path I'm sure a lot of you all have heard of it but just in case you haven't we have got to be eastbound and down, loaded up and trucking. Hey, we gonna do what they say can't be done. We've got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I'm eastbound and watch those friendship tales. Another release with tales in the title. We haven't seen that since the early days of this show. Friendship Tales is next week. Another release that I have a lot of nostalgic ties to. But we'll talk about that when we come back. Thank you all so very much for watching. I'll see you all then. Good night, everybody.